Hi, I'm Jim with UltrasoundBoardReview.com. Today, I'm going to teach you how to determine left ventricular diastolic dysfunction. Diastolic dysfunction is a condition of the heart caused by stiffening of the ventricles that limits the heart's ability to fill with blood in between heartbeats. Assessing can be one of the most complex applications you will use in echocardiography. The first half of this video, we will talk about patients who have a normal ejection fraction, and then in the later half, we will talk about patients who have a decreased systolic function. First step in assessing diastolic dysfunction is determining your E to E prime. The capital E is the early filling in which you get when you place the sample gate in the apical four chamber at the tips of the mitral valve, and this lowercase e you'll get from when you place your tissue Doppler pulse wave on the medial and lateral annulus. So if your early filling velocity is 100 centimeters per second and your e prime is 5 centimeters per second, all you do is divide 5 into 100. This gives you 20 centimeters per second. The normal range for the EDU prime is less than 14. The normal values for your E prime on your medial annulus is, so for the medial, anything greater than 8 centimeters per second is normal. And for your lateral, anything greater than 10 centimeters per second is normal. So typically if you have a high EDE prime, these here, these values will be abnormal. The next step is assessing the velocity of tricuspid regurgitation in your parasternal and your apical four chamber views. And the cutoff velocity is... 2.8 meters per second. So if you get 2.8 or more, you can use this as one of the factors in determining diastolic dysfunction. The third step is determining the left atrial volume index based on the patient's BSA. And the cutoff is 34 milliliters per square meters. So anything above this is better than 34 milliliters per square meter is considered abnormal. This number is based on the patient's weight and the measurements you get when you trace the left atrium in the apical four chamber along with the length here going all the way up and down perpendicular to the mitral annulus plane. If your patient has more than 50% of the items listed here, then the patient is considered to be positive. If the patient only has 50%, it's considered to be indeterminate and if they have less than 50%, then it's considered to be normal diastolic function. Now we will discuss diastolic dysfunction with patients who have a decreased systolic function. We're going to use the same parameters as we used before with patients who have a normal EF. And we will just add the E to A ratio. You're going to get the value of this number when you put the pulse wave sample gate at the tips of your mitral valve and you measure here and here. When you obtain your E to A ratio, pay attention to the E wave mitral inflow. Anything greater than or equal to 50 centimeters per second is considered abnormal. So if you get an E to A ratio of let's say 0 0.8, but your inflow velocity is less than 50 centimeters per second. This is considered grade one diastolic dysfunction. Now let's say that your E to A is greater than 0 0.8 and your E wave velocity micro inflow is greater than or equal to 50 centimeters per second. If this is the case, there are three criteria you have to assess. The three criteria are E to E prime greater than 14, TR velocity greater than 2.8 meters per second, and the LA volume index greater than 34 milliliters 
per square meter. If the patient is negative for two out of the three, then the patient either has a normal diastolic dysfunction or it's grade one diastolic dysfunction. If the patient is positive for two out of the three, then the patient has grade two diastolic dysfunction. If only two out of the three criteria are available, so let's say we're unable to get like the TR velocity, let's say the patient is positive for one and negative for the other, then it's considered indeterminate. If they're negative for both, patient is either grade one or normal diastolic function. If they're positive for both, it's considered grade two diastolic dysfunction. If your E to A ratio is greater than or equal to two, then you're considered to have grade three diastolic dysfunction. And that is how you diagnose diastolic dysfunction in patients with a normal EF and patients with an abnormal EF. Thanks for watching.